12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Ooh. Happy Thursday. Isn't it Friday Eve, Thursday? Yeah, and it's exciting because you got rain. Got a little rain. Yeah. Got to got to chest out, uh, check out the windshield wipers and they work. <laughs> Dust them off. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of people might want to try that before, <laughs> you know. You yeah. Smear the mud stuff. across your windshield. Yeah. That's what you do. That's what, yeah. uh, <laughs> just listen, move the mud. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, for those folks who are just waking up, maybe you uh, slept in this morning. Yes, it did rain last night. We got some showers and a few storms. Nothing very heavy. The rain didn't amount to much, but we did get some rain here in San Antonio. Two hundredths of an inch. That's it. Uh, but you see the numbers a little better out west. Camp Wood. Over an inch of rain last night. Brackenville about two tenths of an inch. Kerrville four hundredths of an inch. The biggest total I found was up there in northern Gillespie County, north of Fredericksburg, where they picked up over two inches. All that rain has moved out. We're going to see a quiet stretch here into the afternoon before we could see some more showers and storms develop. You see the authority radar here. Pretty quiet. Nothing here around San Antonio. And in fact, the clouds are starting to clear out. We're going to see quite a bit of sun. That's going to push temperatures up. 87 noon time. I think we can go as high as 97 this afternoon. With that in mind, there's going to be a lot of humidity, so it's going to feel like it's in the triple digits. Know that today will be pretty steamy. We do have some rain chances though coming back into play around dinner time. And as we head into tonight, I want to watch that too, because if we do get some storms to develop, they could be on the strong side, uh, just because we have a lot of energy in the atmosphere. More rain chances coming up tomorrow. More on Saturday. We're going to get into the details and some specifics there for you. Coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, look forward to that, Justin. Thank you. Yes, we both do. And for now, let's look at today's 9 at 9. Lawyers for suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton set to begin presenting their defense this morning. The impeachment trial winding down and will determine whether the Republican is removed for office or not. Prosecutors rested their case yesterday after a woman who was expected to testify about an extramarital affair with Paxton made a sudden appearance at the trial, but never took the stand. It's deadline day for auto workers in Detroit's big three car makers to reach a contract deal or risk a strike. The head of the United Auto Workers Union says the latest deal from the companies isn't good enough. Workers are demanding higher wages and a shorter work week. More than 100,000 auto workers could strike by midnight tonight if their labor contracts expire without a new agreement in place. A tropical storm warning is in effect for the island of Bermuda for Hurricane Lee, which is expected to pass by the island today. Forecasters say that Category 2 hurricane will bring strong winds and heavy rain to the area, and Lee is expected to head toward the New England area over the next few days. Inflation at the wholesale level rose more than expected in August, countering recent data showing that price increases have tempered lately. The producer price index increased a seasonally adjusted 0.7% in August and 1.6% on a year-over-year -year basis. EPI is a measure of what producers get for their goods and services. More hope among stock traders that the Fed will leave interest rates alone this month. It comes after new data showed a moderate increase in inflation. Many took that as a sign that the Fed may not feel the need for another rate hike. The Nasdaq gaining nearly 0.3%, the S&P closing up a little over 1%, the Dow lost 0.2%. A federal appeals court has set a date of October 5th to hear oral arguments in the controversial Texas border buoys case. Last week, the appellate court ordered a temporary freeze in the case after Texas requested a stay. The freeze came just 24 hours after a U.S. district judge had ruled that the White House could order Texas to remove the buoys covered in razor wire. A federal judge in Texas ruled that a regulation intended to preserve the Obama-era Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, program is unlawful. The order doesn't impact current beneficiaries of the program, but the move delivered a major blow to the Biden administration. Last year, the administration tried to preserve the program, which protects undocumented immigrants who were brought to the U.S. as children. Changes are on the way at America's third largest bank. The head of Citigroup is stripping out a layer of management and ordering job cuts in an effort to control costs and boost profits. The NBA has a new policy to reduce the amount of time star players are rested for high-profile games. Teams must provide an approved reason to rest a star player, and if the player needs to rest, the team is required to have that player present and visible to fans. The league also wants the most well-known athletes to be available for all national and NBA season tournament games. The new policy begins with the new season 
And that's today's Nine at Nine. And here at home, today, San Antonio City Council members will vote on the final version of the new city budget. So things got a little tense yesterday as members made last minute tweaks to that proposal. Some of those changes included adding more money for animal care services and adding around the clock coverage from a new mental health team. But once again, a proposed fund that could in part help pay for trips out of state for women to get legal abortions caused the most controversy. Now later today, city council will vote whether to include it in the final version of the budget or not. There's a lot that's going into the new city budget and we have a full breakdown for you on KSAT.com. A new COVID vaccine making its way to pharmacies and health clinics this week. It comes after a rise of cases across the country here at home. San Antonio Metro Health reported more than 2,000 new cases this week. RJ Marquez tells us everything we need to know about that new vaccine. COVID is here to stay, and this week the federal government signed off on a new shot to combat an increase in cases. Dr. Jason Bowling with University Health tells us why this is a new vaccine and not just a new booster. It has a new variant strain in the vaccine itself. And so it is, does not contain the original strain like the prior boosters and vaccines did. So it will not just be boosting something that people have already received. This new shot will target the variant that's currently circulating. It is one strain versus the last one that we have, which was two strains. So the idea is to kind of have a newer vaccine strain to provide better protection. Health officials want to simplify the COVID vaccine schedule, making it as normal as getting an annual flu shot. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention also recommends all Americans six months and older get the new dose. They're trying to reset the strategy, right? They want to improve uptake and they want people to be protected. We want everybody to get the dose of COVID vaccine so that they're up to speed for this upcoming respiratory virus season. Dr. Bowling says testing of the new vaccine has shown no new side effects. It's really built in the same platform, so really no new side effects have been noted so far. It is an additional layer of protection, so it protects against more severe outcomes. It reduces your risk of going to the hospital or dying from COVID-19. The new vaccine is already rolling out and will be available soon. CVS says its locations will begin receiving it this week. HEB expects its first shipment by this weekend, and Walmart also expects to have it available within the next week. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And inflation continued to rise last month. August hit the biggest monthly gain this year, according to the latest report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. However, there are some positive signs. CNN's Ivan Rodriguez breaks down the numbers and what it could mean for the economy's future. U.S. inflation accelerated in August for the second straight month. The main culprit, rising gas prices, which could mean problems going forward. If high oil and gasoline prices are sustained, that's something that could spill over into prices for other goods and services. Greg McBride, chief financial analyst with Bankrate, says while increases in some key areas are slowing down, we are not out of the woods. Shelter costs are still increasing, but at a slower pace than what we had seen. And food prices have certainly moderated from the outsized pace of the past couple of years. So some signs of progress but still some trouble spots we have to keep an eye on. The rise in inflation is roughly in line with economists' expectations. On a month-to-month -month basis, prices rose 0.6% in August, compared with the 0.2% gain in July. However, core inflation, which strips away food and energy prices, slowed to 4.3% from 4.7% on an annual basis, an indication the Federal Reserve's rate hikes are working to cool the economy. McBride says these numbers will likely keep the Fed on track for a pause in rate hikes. But I also expect they're going to maintain this stance of, well, hey, we may have to raise interest rates again if need be. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. It is now 906 and 75 degrees, only 75 degrees. At mm -hmm. We will take it. Sweet. I'm happy with that. <laughs> and make sure you have the case set up and the notifications turned on. And this is because in less than an hour, at 10 o'clock, more entertainers coming to the San Antonio Rode Rodeo in February are going to be announced. So we're going to be pushing out that story at 10 a.m. And while we can't tell you who those performers are just yet, we could say there are some 90s country music favorites, David. Not Ooh, bad like on the that. List. So look out for that story. But first, here's a look at what's coming up next. KSAC community has teamed up with the San Antonio Food Bank and RBFCU for Hunger Action Month. We're going to tell you the top most wanted food items and how it will impact our community next.
Welcome back. KSAC Community partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank and Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union to help squash hunger during Hunger Action Month. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from the RBFCU located along I-35 South and Barlight Boulevard on the southwest side. And Tiffany, where they are going to be accepting food items that can change someone's life. Good morning. Good morning. We're already seeing donations and those signature red barrels. Yeah, they're back here at RBFCU's. Last year, they collected nearly 4,000 pounds of food for the San Antonio Food Bank. We have Liz with the San Antonio Food Bank and Victoria with RBFCU to talk a little bit more about this month. And let's start with you, Liz. Good morning. Tell us a little bit about how this will impact our community this month. Yeah, good morning. So Hunger Action Month and this entire food drive is has an incredible impact on the community. Right now our numbers are almost just as high as they were during the pandemic. We're seeing them grow higher and higher. So right now we're serving about 105,000 each and every week. And really the goal of Hunger Action Month is not only to get the community together to really support a good cause and supporting our neighbors and making sure everyone's fed, but also ensuring that we've got all the food that we need to get us through that holiday season. A lot of kids talking about holiday season, they're going to be out of school. So this is going to be critical for some families and those kids. That's exactly right. So these donations are really what helps a lot of families stretch through the weekends or after school snacks, those meals, the, the dinner meals, um, everything that, they, that they're not going to be getting while school's out of session. Perfect. And Victoria, you tell me, what are the most wanted items? Yeah, so there's the 12 most wanted items, uh, things that you can get, peanut butter, cereal, tuna, pot, pop top food items, beans, rice, mac and cheese, full meals, that's canned in box, chilies, canned stews, canned soups, canned lunch meat. So there's a plethora of things you can give. Uh, rice and peanut butter go a long way and are just such nutritious foods for everyone. 4,000 pounds of food last year. Yeah. What's the goal this year? <laughs> so um, 4,000 pounds, our goal always with our VFCU is something that aligns with our mission, improving the economic well-being and quality of life of our members. And what better way to do that than aligning with our partners, the Food Bank, to fight hunger, feed hope. 4,000 pounds is huge. We love seeing it. We know that the giving area of the San Antonio community is so big and everyone has such wonderful hearts. We just want everyone to come out and give. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to give and we want to show you this graphic of a town hall we're having. We're going to continue this conversation next week. We're going to have our KSAC community town hall where we'll be talking to leaders from the San Antonio Food Bank. And we're also going to be hearing about inspiring stories of hope from neighbors in our community. We're going to be live streaming that next Friday from 2.30 to 3.30. We're going to have all those details on KSAC.com. We'll send it back to you. We look forward to it. Thank you, Tiffany. I like the fact that there's 12 food items. Well, it makes it easier to for. remember, like yeah. if you're in a pinch. 12. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And we know San Antonio will come through because they always do. It's always. One of yes, the greatest giving cities in the country. That's true. Yeah. Truly is. Uh, I wish Mother Nature would give us some rain. <laughs> yeah. That'd that be would be nice. Well, well we, we got a little got, bit. We got a little David, bit. David got yeah. some on the way to work. Got a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Little bit. <laughs> there was some this morning. It was nice just to hear the, the light rain coming down, and uh, hopefully we're going to get some more rounds of that. It's it's hard to pinpoint timing with these kind of patterns, but I think we are going to see some rain uh, between now and Sunday for sure. I think there's good odds to that. So let's go outside for you first. Or actually, let's look at the radar over the last six hours. And that rain we were talking about. There it is. You can see it come across the area last night. Now, it was falling apart. We didn't get a ton of rain, as I showed you off the top of the show. The numbers weren't huge. But it was nice to get a little bit of rain to, to start our Thursday. Now we're going to see things clear out, at least for a time. So we've got one piece of energy that's come through. And this should allow for some maybe some sinking air on the back side of it, which gives us some quiet conditions through the afternoon until we get to the late afternoon. Then we'll start to see some more storms develop. I think the chances are on the low end, but we need to watch for the risk for some severe weather. That area you see shaded there in yellow, that's where we could see some stronger storms. Now we're talking mainly 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. and the main threat here is going to be strong winds if we can get some of these storms to develop. But you see some of the cities that are involved here, New Braunfels, San Antonio, Bernie, Fredericksburg. That's where we could see some of these storms later tonight. Let's look at the forecast. And this is just one of our models, but it shows at 5 o'clock things are still pretty quiet. There's not a lot going on. But as we head towards, say, 7, 8, 9 o'clock, then we could see some of those storms, uh, especially north of San Antonio. And these are the kind of storms that could put down some of those really strong winds as we get into uh, tonight. Most of that dies down 
Uh, and then as we get into tomorrow, things start to pick back up again. This is 5 o'clock Friday. Uh, we're seeing some storms starting to develop out west. And then watch what happens. We see sort of an uptick in rain by the time we get into Friday night and Saturday morning. This is midnight Saturday with some storms moving across. And I think this is probably our best opportunity to get some good rainfall totals, especially as we get into early Saturday morning. And then even during the day on Saturday, we'll still have an opportunity for some rain. So I know you're probably saying, hey, I'm trying to plan out my weekend. What is it going to look like Saturday? And it's, it's still hard to pinpoint, again, the timing of this. Uh, but just know there is going to be some rain around. It won't be rainy all day, but the, the chances are there. Our forecast for today, I think we clear out 87 noontime. That allows us to warm up pretty significantly, 97 by 4 o'clock. But that translates to a heat index, probably 100 or above. So it's going to be steamy out there. And then by the time we get into tonight, there's that 20% chance frame we were talking about with some of those isolated storms. Uh, rain chances over the next few days. So we've got 20% today and tonight, 40% chance Friday. So we'll watch for Friday night football, 50% chance Friday night into Saturday morning. And we'll bring rain chances down a little bit on Saturday. But as I said, there's still an opportunity. And even going into Saturday night into Sunday, we've got rain chances. So this is a good stretch for us. And here's the latest drop monitor. Boy, I wish we could erase this. It, it's still really bad, even though we had some rain as of late. Exceptional drought still sticking around. As we zoom out some, that exceptional drought now stretches from Austin over to Houston. And this is an area that probably will get some good rain over the next several days. This is through Sunday morning. Rainfall estimates. We're thinking one to two inches north of us here around San Antonio, probably more on the order half an inch to an inch. But there will be isolated spots. They get more than that. Hopefully, where you are, you get some good rain. Here's the weather where you live right now. 77 in New Braunfels, 70 in Bernie. 72 Kerrville, and you see the satellite picture here. Clouds are moving out, and temperatures already in the 80s. Pleasanton, Kennedy, you got low 70s up to the north. Fredericksburg, 71, place that got some good rain overnight. 76 in Rio Medina, 80 right now in Castroville. And the forecast today, 95 is the forecast high. You'll see cooler stuff to the north and warmer stuff to the south, just like we've seen over the last couple of days. Extended forecast, 93 Friday, 92 Saturday. There are those rain chances we discussed. And then probably by the middle part of next week, the rain kind of shuts off some. But this is a fun stretch. It's fun to be able to forecast showers and storms. It's fun to see the rain and, and the clouds out there. Yeah, at least. It feels so much better. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. 918 and 76 degrees. Well, student loan payments are set to resume in a couple of weeks, and that means money could be even tighter for people. After the break, a little trick that could be helpful for those who want to continue to contribute to the retirement plan, but have to use that same money to make student loan payments. Many young professionals with student loan debt face a tough decision. If monthly funds are limited, should they pay on their student loans or contribute to a retirement fund? With student loan payments about to resume October 1st after a three-year pandemic pause, new legislation could help many borrowers avoid that difficult choice. The new Secure 2.0 Act lets borrowers pay down student loans while still getting their employer match contribution to a company-offered retirement plan, even if they are not actually contributing to the plan at the time. First, the borrower must inform their employer that they plan to use money that would have otherwise gone into a retirement fund to pay off debt. Secure 2.0 then requires the company to still make what would have been matched deposits into the employee's retirement fund. The best part, there's not a lot of paperwork involved. Secure 2.0 does not make you prove that you spent 401k money on student loan debt instead. However, tax experts caution, being honest is the best policy in the event you're ever audited by the IRS. You'll have the paper trail to show you played by the book. You can read the full legislation's benefits at finance.senate.gov. You know, there is some change in the weather. We got some rain today, so yeah. that's one change, maybe a little more over the weekend, but the drought is still a pretty big deal. And with water levels at Canyon Lake at a record low, businesses that depend on the lake are going dry too. Jonathan Cotto explains why those businesses say the one thing they need to survive is you. We can do kayaking, we can do paddle boarding. You know, there's lots of great restaurants out here. Sam Painter, a business owner on Canyon Lake, says in spite of record low water levels, Canyon Lake has been and still is open for business. You can come out and barbecue with your family. You can 
hit a kayak, you can hit a paddleboard, you can come out here with a captain boat without a problem and still be safe. Peter says Canyon Lake has been home for the last 21 years and says the canyon has seen low levels before and has been able to bounce back. The last time that I saw it out here growing up was gonna be around the uh, 2011 area. And that was just, it, it, we had a drought like this and then we got lucky and we had a big hurricane. We did have a chance to speak with workers who were here who say they are taking advantage of the low water levels to do maintenance on the boat ramp, which is a reminder that the only open public boat ramp at this time is boat ramp 17. I would recommend if you're going to go, go very early. And then whenever you're going to come out, I recommend going out at about 3.30 or 4 before you beat the rush. And if fishing is your thing, Painter says Canyon Lake is still the perfect spot. Especially if you have a, you know, let's say a kayak that is, you know, set up for fishing, which I've seen a lot out there. There are a couple of my friends do have those. Take them out there. You're going to have no problem. You're going to catch some good fish. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And even if it may not completely feel like it, fall is almost here. And when it comes to flying, prices are falling fast, especially international flights. CNN's Jen Sullivan has tips to find great deals on flights. Airfare is falling this fall, and travel experts say now is a great time to book air travel, especially if you're looking to travel abroad this autumn and beyond. Flight prices over to Europe are actually about to come down in a pretty significant way here as we get into the fall and into 2024. According to travel app Hopper, autumn fares are 9% less expensive than last year and 10% cheaper than in 2019. Ticket prices for September and October are 29% cheaper than the average prices for peak domestic summer travel. And international ticket prices to some destinations have come down by a similar amount. Travel expert Scott Kai says lower prices are driving up demand among people looking to visit popular international destinations in Europe and South America. Number of Americans traveling down to Mexico, 20% higher than it was in 2019. The number of Americans flying over to Europe, 15% higher than it was in 2019. So, how to find a great airfare deal this fall? Kai's has these three tips. One, use a price monitoring tool to get real-time updates and get notified when prices are at the lowest for your trip. Two, consider flying during the middle of the week instead of on the weekends. That increases your chances of finding a cheaper flight. And three, for overseas travel, consider flying over Thanksgiving. Kai says it's the hidden best week for international travel. Especially if you've got the week off work, if the kids have the week off school, and if you're interested in those Christmas markets. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Time now, 926 and 76 degrees for now. And coming up, a look at some of the new Google features the company is offering in certain vehicles. Plus a small horse, Gus is his name, is having a big impact on those around him. It really lights up everybody's world when they meet him. John Paparaz shares Gus's story. You know, there's nothing better than a horse named Gus. I know. Texas. A lot of personality. Texas horse. Welcome back. It's 930. So meet Gus. Gus over here. He stands at just three feet tall. But this miniature horse is making a big difference. <laughs> As John Paul tells us, nobody wanted Gus originally, but now he has a home and a purpose, helping those with special needs at Hope Reigns of Texas. Good. Whoopsie, that's okay. You Good. may not realize it, Easy but you're watching a young lady make progress one step at a time with a little help from a miniature horse. Yeah, Gus is a friendly little guy. He, he has never met a stranger, and that's one amazing thing about him that we love. It really lights up everybody's world when they meet him. Gus is one of the newest team members at Hope Reigns of Texas, providing hippotherapy, meaning physical, occupational, or speech therapy with the help of a horse. He joined the nonprofit in May of 2022, and he's already becoming a fan favorite. Gus, let go! Let's let go! Gus and the other horses at Hope Reigns of Texas work with children and adults who have special needs, as well as wounded warriors. And they're also having to find their balance. So they're, they're sensory, their neuromotor, their cognitive systems, all having to work together while they're on top of this horse. Gus is too small to ride, but he offers therapy in other ways. So for us, I mean, you know, 
We can, we can pinch that nice and easy, slip it on right there and easy peasy. Braiding hair, clipping on these little bows, all that's working on their fine motor. And his stature is a strength when easing people into the world of horses. Very unique because his size is lovable. It's just, he, he makes you know it's okay to be a little bitty. With all the love Gus gets now, it's hard to imagine that at one point, nobody wanted him. <laughs> Until Kyle Hackley rescued him from a Florida ranch and brought him to stay at Hope Rains in Boverde. I looked in those big brown eyes and I knew right then he was extraordinarily special. Now he provides care, calm and companionship for those facing challenges. I think he likes people more than other horses sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> John Paul Barajas, ASAT 12 News. How cute. See, that's what makes Gus so special. Nobody wanted him, so the kids want it. Yeah. So he and the kids bond because they're just that kind of people. Yeah, he's got a that kind of horse. horse great, great. great personality, that Gus. Yes. Puts a smile on your face. Yeah. Seeing stories like that. Gus. It honestly does. That's a great horse name. Yeah. I love it too. Yeah, Gus. Gus. It's a solid. It's a solid <laughs> name. Uh, let me take you outside with a picture. This is from KSAC Connect. And this is Bradley Middle School, seventh grade football versus Eisenhower Middle School. Look at that. That's a great sky. I know you can't see it there on the bottom of your screen. They are playing football. Uh, the, the banner kind of covers it up there. Uh, but the sky, that is the, the show, and it is beautiful. We appreciate that picture. Hopefully we'll get some more scenes like that, some rain coming through, and then some uh, beautiful sunrises and sunsets. That would be ideal. The radar right now, the authority radar, is not showing anything. The showers and storms we had uh, that came through earlier have since moved to the east or fallen apart. And I think we're going to see a, a pretty big break in the action until later this afternoon and this evening when we could get a few more showers and storms to pop up. High temperatures today, it'll be awful warm here. 97 in San Antonio, 104 in Laredo, still much cooler. As you go north, 78 Lubbock, 73 in Amarillo today, and 78 in Dallas. Again, there's a look at that picture. We're, we're going to talk more about our rain chances. They're still there. Our best odds probably coming Friday night and a Saturday morning. We'll take a look at that forecast for you here in just a couple minutes. Guys. Hey, Justin. We're going to take you live inside the Senate chamber of the state capitol. That's where the defense is presenting their case and suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton's impeachment trial testimony underway right now. And you can see there's kind of a sidebar. Apparently, the um, prosecution very upset with the defense because the defense presented some evidence that wasn't redacted. And that's why we see them all huddled right there at this moment. Mo at this moment, and like we mentioned at the 9 and 9, the prosecution rested their case yesterday. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick said the trial could be wrapping up soon, so we are continuing to live stream this historic proceeding on KSET.com. So you can head over there to continue watching this feed. Now to a story getting a lot of attention online. It is a powerful committee that makes policy recommendations for one of San Antonio's largest school districts. But there is controversy around a woman appointed to Northeast ISD's School Health Advisory Council. Crystal Keene's husband was convicted for his role in the riot at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th and continued to post controversial material on social media even after being released from federal custody. As case it investigates, Dylan Collier found Keene herself has been a frequent critic of the district she now represents. <laughs> Last month, Northeast ISD School Health Advisory Council, or SHAC, held its first meeting of the school year. Among the new members tasked with providing the district guidance on topics ranging from mental health of students to sexual education, uh, I'm Crystal Keen. was Crystal Keen, a licensed nurse appointed by District 7 trustee Marsha Landry. Public records show Keen is married to Matthew Mazzocco, their Stone Oak home was raided by the FBI in January 2021, shortly after the Capitol insurrection. Mazzocco posted this now infamous selfie on Facebook with the caption, the Capitol is ours, despite later deleting the picture. Below his Facebook profile. Mazzocco was outed by social media users and parents of a San Antonio youth sports league to which he belonged. The feds eventually charged him with entering a restricted building without lawful authority and violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. Prosecutors dismissed the second charge after Mazzocco agreed that summer to plead guilty to the first charge. 
He was sentenced to 45 days in jail on the federal misdemeanor and became the first Capitol rioter sent to jail after prosecutors had recommended home confinement. The judge in the case criticized Mazzocco for denying a riot had taken place and for blaming the violence at the Capitol on Antifa. Late last month, KSAT attempted to speak with Keene and Mazzocco at their far north side home. But no one came to the door. So days later... Crystal, do you have a few minutes to talk to us? We caught up with Keene before the start of the public shack meeting. I just want to ask you a few questions about your appointment to the committee. Did you go to anybody else's front door? Uh, we, I do that pretty much every single day. So Any comment on that? My husband served his time that was given to him by the judge. I'm a separate person from my husband. So if you want to interview Matt, you can definitely we do that. Through his criminal attorney, Keene's husband said he didn't want to be interviewed and had no comment. Mazzocco, who finished his federal sentence in February of last year, resumed a social media presence after his release. Many of his Facebook posts are public. In them, he repeatedly compares President Joe Biden to Adolf Hitler, has reposted racially insensitive content, and launched into written tirades against out-of-state school boards, writing last October, quote, there are a lot of child molesters out there. A lot of them wear suits and ties. A day later, Mazzocco shared this video of a parent berating a North Carolina school board over a widely banned book that was found in a seventh grade classroom. Any teacher that puts material like this on his or her bookshelf is either a bad teacher or a pedophile who grooms Thank children. Mazzocco wrote, quote, these pedophiles are everywhere and they want to have sex with your kids, literally. Patrick Von Dolan, one of the founders of the San Antonio Family Association and a frequent critic of NEISD's sex education curriculum, said Keene's credentials as a nurse for 14 years trump any concerns about who she's married to, his criminal record, or what he posts on the internet. Crystal's a friend and, uh, and uh, been um, known her for several years and I would say that that's a private matter for them that they need to discuss. But Von Dolan concedes. Who are not influenced by their spouses. I'm influenced by my wife and uh, hopefully and usually she would certainly say for the better. Internal NEISD records obtained by KSAT show Keene has frequently tracked the communications of NEISD board members including its president Shannon Grona has asked for records on district drug abuse instruction and school behavior plans and last October even accused its board of not following the bylaws of SHAC, the committee she now belongs to. In February, in an email to NEISD superintendent about banned books, Keene incorrectly questioned whether an employee of the Chicago-based American Library Association was actually a district employee with a similar name. The superintendent politely informed Keene they are not the same person. For KSAT Investigates, I appreciate the um, camera. I'm Dylan Collier. Trustee Marcia Landry did not respond to emails from us asking about her appointment of Keene, whose term runs until 2025. And one other note, the School Health Advisory Council makes recommendations to the board, but cannot vote on new policies or curriculum for the district. Now to some tech news. Amazon has rolled out new AI tools helping sellers list their products. Amazon says the tools will write, quote, captivating listing details, simplify the process, and save time. And customers will have more complete information. However, there are concerns the models could create false data. Google is out with software updates for Android Auto and cars with Google built in. One update allows drivers to take Zoom or WebEx calls from their vehicle's display. Another makes Prime Video available on Google Play and select models, but only when the car is parked. And Ring has an add-on to help you find a missing pet. The pet tag attaches to your pet's collar and contains a digital profile. The tag has a QR code, which includes the owner's name, address, and other helpful information. The feature costs ten dollars. Aw, for Fido. Oh, I've got to keep up with Fido. Yeah. 941, 77 degrees. You're watching GMSA at nine. Aaron Rodgers is vowing to come back after his torn Achilles he suffered during week one of the NFL season, but his injury has sparked discussions again 
about whether NFL fields should use real grass or artificial turf. We'll have that story coming up after weather. Let's look out there with Zoo Kim and let's ask if the flamingos wow. are happy that they're going to get some rain today, possibly. Or not today, are. tomorrow, right, Justin? They're all in the oh, shade. There's a, there's a small chance today. I think the better <laughs> chance is tomorrow. Look at look at the one just kind of hanging out. He's, 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 getting, the sun, he's like, getting a tan, David. Bas really? Basking in <laughs> the gonna sun. He's going to turn a, sun. a brighter pink. <laughs> Nobody else is even around him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he told a bad joke and they Maybe. all just kind of like, eh. Give me some space. Uh, yeah, you know, yesterday, they, they I, I feel like they were happier yesterday because the clouds are there and now the sun's yeah. I think you're right. This again. Yeah. Uh, upper 90s today. I, I will tell you, it's going to be hot this afternoon. And, uh, upper 90s, but plus humidity. And so the heat index may jump over 100. We're back to that. Mm -hmm. But it's a one-day thing because I think it does get cooler tomorrow and Saturday. Let's go outside for you. 76. Northeast Julie winds at five. We've got some clouds for the moment, but it's clearing out, so the sun will help to boost those temperatures soon. Here's a look at the authority radar, and really is nothing going on. We had showers and storms overnight, came in from the west. Those have pushed away or fallen apart, and so the radar is giving us the all clear at this hour. Cloud cover. Clouds moving out of San Antonio. We still see a patch of clouds up here around Kerrville that are holding on, so that'll help with temperatures there. But with the sun out uh, here in town, uh, we'll see those, again, temperatures jump up pretty quick. Uh, we'll see more clouds during the afternoon, and some of those clouds could bubble up into some isol isolated showers and storms. 85 right now in Pleasanton, 85 Kennedy, 74 Kerrville, 72 in Junction. It is 77 out in Del Rio. And a little closer look here at Bear County, mid-upper 70s at this point, but 80s will be here soon. Here's your case at 12-hour forecast. Noontime, 87, mostly sunny. 4 o'clock. Just a very, very small chance for a 97. That's that high temperature I was talking about. And then as we head into late afternoon and evening hours, you've got a 20% chance of rain. And while it won't be widespread, any storm that does develop has the potential to be strong. And I think gusty winds would be the main threat. So that's what we got to watch out for on the radar tonight. Uh, what about uh, going forward into Friday? So let's first start though with Thursday, five o'clock. Not much there. There's a few of those storms we were talking about tonight. This is 9 o'clock. Uh, does show some storms. Some of these could pack a punch. Now let's get into Friday. Uh, as we get into Friday, it starts off pretty quiet. And then again, we start to see storms uh, develop as we get into the afternoon hours. And uh, as we get into, say, early Saturday, here comes more storms moving in. So these are all time frames we'll be watching. And the models have been kind of jumping around with this. But I think a 20% chance of rain today, 40% chance Friday, 50% chance Friday night into Saturday morning, and Saturday is still a chance of rain. Saturday night and Sunday as well will have a 20% chance of rain. So there, there's rain across the board here. It's just going to be a matter of exactly when some of this rain falls. And in this kind of pattern, it's always kind of tricky to uh, figure that out. Uh, but one to two inches, I think, on average is what we'll see rainfall-wise, especially across uh, central and north Texas and a little closer to San Antonio and as you move south, more on the order of a half an inch to an inch. But still some good numbers, I think. And this is going to be one of those situations where everyone gets in on some rain, at least at some point. And that's exactly what we want to see. Now we got to go out to the tropics. Uh, we've been tracking uh, Lee for so long now, and uh, it's still there, still there. It's still a hurricane. Margo's still a hurricane, too, and this likely becomes a name storm here within the next few days. But Lee remains the main concern here. What is it? 90 miles per hour. It's finally starting to pick up steam here north at 14. And the track takes it near Cape Cod as Category 1 hurricane. That would be Saturday. Winds at 75 miles per hour. They won't feel that in Boston, but they will get the surf and some rain probably from this. And then it goes up into parts of Canada, weakening and becoming extra tropical as it does, but producing rain there as well. So the extended forecast. 93 tomorrow, we're going to call for 40% chance rain, again 20% chance today, 50% chance Friday night into Saturday, 92 Saturday, 92 Sunday. We'll be cooler this weekend, uh, thanks to clouds and some chances of rain. And then the rain chances start to drop off as we head into early next week, guys. Thank you, Justin. The injury that ended Aaron Rodgers' season as the quarterback of the New York Jets has reignited a debate over playing surfaces in the NFL. Questions once again being raised about the safety of the field at MetLife Stadium, as well as other league venues that use AstroTurf. ABC's Andrew Dibbert has the latest plus what Rodgers is saying about his injury. 
In his first public statement since that season-ending injury Monday night. Protection breaks down and time runs out. Down goes Rodgers. And now Rodgers sits down. Aaron Rodgers is promising he'll be back. The four-time MVP saying, I'm completely heartbroken and moving through all of the emotions, but deeply touched and humbled by the support and love. The night is darkest before the dawn, and I shall rise yet again. It comes as the blame game surrounding his injury begins. With Rodgers having been the oldest active player in the NFL, many cite the 39-year-old's age as a factor. Why are we surprised? that older quarterbacks get hurt. But the injury is reigniting a debate about the field itself. Many claiming Rodgers may not have torn his Achilles if the Jets MetLife Stadium used grass instead of artificial turf. Some of the game's biggest stars weighing in. The numbers say that grass is healthier for the players, and so I want to play on the best surface that will keep me healthy. Studies have come out how, how much safer grass fields are. Uh, so I think that's, that's important. The NFL Players Association is now calling on the league to switch all fields to grass, citing studies that show more non-contact injuries happen on turf than on grass. But NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell defending artificial turf. You also have other players who like playing on a turf field because mm. it's faster. Mm, that's true. So you, you've got, you know, you've got a, a mixed opinions. Mm -hmm. What we want to go is on science. We want to go on what's the best from an injury standpoint to prevent the injuries to give our players the best, best possible surface to play on. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Back to Rogers, thanks to modern rehab techniques, experts say that he could actually return and play at an elite level, but it's gonna be a long road to recovery. And if you've followed athletes who have torn their Achilles, it's a painful injury and it takes a while to get back. We have coworkers who have uh, torn their Achilles. Yeah. yeah, it's a long, a long journey, but hang in there. Time now, 952 and 78 degrees for now. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 955. September National Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. One in eight million, one in eight men will be diagnosed with the disease during his lifetime, making it the most common cancers among men. So coming up tomorrow on Gym SA at 9, we're going to be speaking with a local radiation oncologist about what warning signs men should be looking out for and when to get screened. So tune in for that and much more tomorrow once again on Gym SA at 9. Uh, we're still in the upper 70s right now, but it's going to warm up pretty quickly today. 97, the forecast, a 20% chance of some storms this afternoon. We do need to watch, though... Uh, those hours this afternoon because some of those storms could uh, become strong. 40% uh, chance of rain tomorrow. We up the rain chances, especially Friday night and Saturday morning. Another time frame to watch. And we've got isolated stuff Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, too. Thank you very much. And don't forget to have your notifications turned on for the KSEP app because just in a few minutes, that's 10 a.m., we're going to announce a few other entertainers that are coming to the San Antonio Rodeo. I know Dave is very excited to learn. Yeehaw! That's Rodeo San Antonio. I know. <laughs> We're ready to hear about it. So, yeah. All right. Turn, oh, y'all are going to be pumped. Turn gonna be the excited. app on. <laughs> Have a good day.